memorizing. We have done all this in the best interest of the, the learners uh, as well as the parents. We uh, next session. We are going to be learning in Shururi and Fusina and Minsaya and Amalina. May I have the Hilahu Fala Mudilla and my youth in Fala Hadia? We are Shadu and La Ila Hila Law of Hila Hila Shari Kala. We are Shadu and Muhammad and Abdul or Rasula Mabad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Da na so in cigaba da zagin da anka nada shi malamin mu malami in cigaba da nawa speech a Hausa amma tunda shugabana Mal Abdul Rahman ya Hausa kuma ya turanci ne ce to kaga ya lalata min tsare ni san da nake in cigaba da Hausa daga beginning to the end but um, I would follow suit my ogre and switch inshallah um, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has made it possible for us to be seated here today um, to witness 223 of our lovely kids graduating um, after their scriptural recitation of the glorious Quran from the beginning to the end Mine would not be a discussion particularly about this program, but I just want to share some thoughts with us as it affects, I would say, and most of us would surely agree, the most important aspect of our lives. Today, all of us as parents can live from now to the last day of our lives without a vehicle. So when you take your car to the mechanic and he destroys your car, that's not the end of life. But none of us can phantom living without our kids surviving and succeeding. Most of us would be ready to lay our lives for our kids to live on. I met a brother the other day. He told me recently all his kids had measles at the same time. And he watched them go through much pain and he was praying to Allah to transfer the measles of the three kids combined to him. And he takes the pain for them. So I'm sure most of us will be ready to take bullets for our kids. And when you look at it from that perspective, we now ask ourselves, what's the most important thing that we need to invest in those kids? It's not the money you leave behind. It's not the houses, the property or the cars. It's actually the education. And when you talk about education, education is not literacy, knowing how to read and write. Education is the transformation of knowledge into impact. So as a medical doctor, if you cannot treat patients, you are knowledgeable but not educated because you've not been able to transform your knowledge into impacting on society. And for you to impact on society, your knowledge and education has to be value-laden. And the highest of values that we know as Muslims is that of Islam. Invariably, our education must be modeled around the aspirations of who we are as Muslims without fear or favor. As such, we must take it upon ourselves as a challenge to make sure that we build a system that meets our aspirations. A lot of us don't know that, as far as the Nigerian constitution is concerned, education is from the National Assembly, not a 100% prerogative of the federal government. What that means, education is not like security, Education is not like power. So states have the ability to fine-tune their education models as it suits the aspirations of the locality and its people. Breaking that down, it means that it is not compulsory, I repeat, it's not compulsory by the Nigerian constitution that we adopt the same education patterns nationwide. What that means to us is, if we partner with the state government. We have the go-ahead by the Nigerian constitution to model out our own education thrust plan.
plan, an idea. At the end of the day, it's to pass WAEC. When you go to the US, the curriculum planning is decentralized. At the end of the day, they write the same exams. However, road you plan and take to pass into exams is your business. And that is what we are trying to do today. For many years in Brilliant Buddhism International Academy, we've always thought about how do we make sure we give Quran its right place in the lives of our children. Most of us had had to grapple with a situation where we cannot depend on the Quran of brilliant footsteps. When they close from school, I assure you some parents still take their kids to other schools till 8, 9, 10 in the night just to achieve this subcar. We always had this at the back of our minds. But Alhamdulillah, through years of planning, today we've gotten to a level that two days ago in the primary school, we were able to graduate 40. This year in the secondary school, 223. And I want to assure us that the quality of their scriptural recitation might be second to none as far as this environment is concerned. Because they have gone through a rigorous process to make sure that they all actually read from beginning to the end very well all the verses in the Quran. Now injecting that aspiration into our education model vis-a-vis -vis what we are doing as far as conventional studies is concerned. For example, not long ago, about two, three weeks ago, Alhamdulillah, we emerged first at the Sober First competition which is basically English. Last week, alhamdulillah, the National Mathematics Olympiad competition organized by the Mathematical Association of Nigeria in all the states to pick out nine students per state that would represent each state at Kano for the national competition. I'm proud to announce to us that of the many schools that contested in Sokoto, I'm not talking about the position now. Of the nine participants representing Sokoto from both public and private schools, BFIA has four learners in the list of those nine. Mathematics. Two weeks ago, English. Now we have to inject the Quran. And that's what we are doing. Alhamdulillah, we've taken the bull by the horn to make sure that we actually sit down and use our resources when I say resources, human and intellectual resources to galvanize our ideas, where we build a system that actually meets our aspirations. So we'll be sending to Kano four of our learners, that's almost 45%. And the other learners are drawn from different schools. A very tough competition. But I always tell the learners when they come back from these competitions, I, I, I tell them, when you emerge second, you've actually emerged first plus. Because the moment we take away the mathematics from that hall and replace it with Arabic, every other participant may be dumbfounded. Because you are double barrel and you are two in one. The education system globally today is one that emphasizes on paper qualification. The earlier we realize that we need to raise kids with skills to meet present day challenges, the better for us. And skills are of different types. They are intellectual, they are soft, they are hard, and an array of categorizations. I want to say that one of the intellectual skills our kids are living with is the fact that they are versatile, both conventional and Islamia. I'll give an example. When we started the Tahfi school in Sarada, like the, like, like the, um, I, 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 I can hardly call him the director, like the MD. <laughs> because when you refer to me as the MD, it's just a nomenclature. This is the real MD. Like he talked about emphasizing on some ideas that we got from that experience we were able to identify a lot of things that we could achieve. And Alhamdulillah, we, like he said, have started trying to see how we can
conform to those real areas that would give us results, both in the conventional and in the Islamia. I'll give an, um, um, an experience. When we started that school, we didn't want to take, you know, our staff, staff from here. So we interviewed a lot of people. There were two graduates from BFIA, ladies. When we interviewed them, they performed better than graduates. One of them is a younger sister to a graduate. Her elder sister also came for the interview. But she read a science-based course. She can't speak Arabic. She's not Islamia inclined. We could only employ her as a volunteer staff to be paid 20,000 Naira. Her younger sister, an SS3 graduate, who has both conventional and Islamia, was employed and receiving 50,000 Naira. Because she's actually connecting to an aspect of the industry. The problem of Nigeria is not unemployment. It's unemployability. Because even as little as this organization seems, we have 411 staff. And I want to tell you, when we come for interviews, we interview 100 and can't get five that are good. Five that are good. We become like a bank. We have to go to Abuja and employ heads of schools to come and serve as teachers here. Because we need, we need people that can speak English, speak Arabic, they memorize the Quran. Wallahi, I want to assure you, they are very, very few in the community. It's, easy for, it's easier for us to employ conventional staff than employing Islamia staff. Because whenever we interview over the phone, Madam Suleiman, Madam Harun, you know, my heart skips a beat when I ask them, what was the performance? If they would talk on the phone with about 50 people, and they'll keep on nodding, no, no, no. And what is wrong? Recently, one of them called me from Abuja. He told me he went to Sudan. He was speaking Arabic. I said, calm down. Somebody will call you tomorrow. One of them called him. And in fact, on my phone, I saved his name as Guru from Abuja. And when they conversed with him in Arabic, the guy said, his Arabic is poor. I said, in the library, in the Arabic poor again, he said, oh guy, you won't understand. I said, no, I would understand. Because when somebody speaks English and says, I has a car, instead of saying, I have a car, automatically I know that this person is not good. Or he comes and says, plumber, instead of plumber. That alone has disqualified him. So I told him, I understand what they are saying when you say there are pitches in his Arabic. But Alhamdulillah, as we move, we are graduating learners that are double barreled and even if it's just this organization we are producing learners that are employable for us wallahi we have vacancies and there are hundreds of applications but we can't employ them because they are not employable the system have, has not targeted values targeted the industry and what it needs so every employer of labor has to spend has to spend so much on training, inductions, capacity building, because the university is just giving us a paper and qualifying us with maturity to be universal. Except of course some professional courses like medicine and so on. But some of us, Alhamdulillah, we read courses that are good, mashallah. But I think the curriculum has to be redesigned. So when you read economics, you graduate and there's something special about you that employers of labor are actually looking for. Not when an economist turns himself into an educationist. So Alhamdulillah, today is a very special day in the canals of history of BFIA because we've been able to officially incorporate the agenda of the popular Soka Al-Qur'ani into our activities. So parents should have nothing to fear. Inshallah, you don't need to take your kids and extra stress them going somewhere else. This is just the first batch. And the idea, to some extent, is when they have done this Soka, 
it improves their capacity to memorize. Because when they now come to memorize, they've already been conversant with all the verses. So it's easier. Because those of us who know about memorization, the first step is for your teacher to actually read it for you how it's supposed to be read. They've done that, Kamila. Alhamdulillah. And this is the batch of secondary. I want to inform them that they are the first set, but um, they are late. Because as we speak, almost all those coming from the secondary, from the primary to secondary, have finished their soccer. And we plan in a way that by basic three, they should have finished the soccer. So it means that it, it gives them more ample room and opportunity to go deeper in the memorization. And Alhamdulillah, like um, Man Abdul Rahman has um, rightly pointed out, that we need to recognize the efforts of the management, the teachers, the parents, and the learners themselves. And this, finally, I would say, is a challenge unto all of us, that it's not just to read the Quran and be happy that we've read it. It's not just to memorize the Quran and be happy that we've memorized it. The companions of the Prophet wasallam, how did they memorize the Quran? They memorize a verse. They don't come back until they practice that verse. So at the end of the day, it's about translating the teachings of the Quran in our lives. So as parents, we have to imbibe that idea as fundamental and an integral part of our thinking. Because when we talk about Quran, excuse me, when we talk about the Quran, please watch my time. You gave me five minutes. No? Ten minutes. Why you should have called my attention. So can I start my five now? You start counting. No, I'll conclude now, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Where was I? <laughs> Dr. Abdul Hamid. Abdul Hamid can relate. You know, when you have a lot of wives, sometimes you forget quickly. So, you, you, where, where was I practicing? Go say that. So, Alhamdulillah, we have to understand that when we talk about the Quran, it's not about the excitement. Ya Isoka, Ya Haddechi. It's not that. How does that translate into character? Aisha Anu was reported to have described the Prophet as a walking Quran. You memorize the Quran, you're telling lies. You have done so you are cheating. You are stealing. You are backbiting. You are envying. So we have to understand that we must, as educators and parents, follow up these feet with what the Quran stands for as we imbibe them in our learners. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assist us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi for being here today. I've just been um, asked to um, call on Khadija Muhammad, Khadija Mansouk Billo, a learner of this um, citadel of learning, Brilliant Footsteps International Academy, who has um, done what many cannot do and that is committing the glorious quran into memory she has not just done so her, her own is not just reciting the quran scripturally no it's not re just reading the quran but it has taken her she has taken her time to commit the whole quran into her memory i have not seen this learner i would want her to um, come forward and have a seat and probably if the family members of Khadija are also around, please, on the Day of Judgment, Rasulun al-Habib Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said that the family, the fathers, the parents of um, Elena, who has memorized the glorious Quran, Khadija, you are welcome. Can we all sing for her this um, supplication? <laughs>